Okay, so in the last video, we looked at using OpenAI's new model to do structured outputs. And a number of people asked, can this be done with Gemini? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with Gemini. And I'm also going to show you how to actually use the JSON output with images so that we can actually put in an image and get JSON output back based on the image that we've got in there. So let's jump into the code and have a look. All right, so first off, we're going to basically just install the newspaper 3K again so we can get an article. We're going to just install the generative AI. So the version of Gemini that I'm using here is the Google AI Studio version. All of this stuff should work with the Vertex version as well. And I think at some point in the future, they'll probably merge these SDKs. So hopefully we don't need to worry about this kind of thing in the future. All right, so I'm just bringing in my Google AI Studio secret from the secrets and I'm just setting up and the first two examples are actually from Google's own examples. So the first one is showing that there are two ways to do the JSON sort of schema stuff in Gemini. So the first way we'll work with both Flash and Pro. So one way works with just Pro, one way works with both of them. I'm going to show you that it's not a big deal for this. So the first way that works with both of them is that all we need to do is in the generation config, we basically need to give it the response MIME type of application slash JSON. So this is just telling the model that, okay, you need to give us JSON back. And you can see that once we've got that, we can just basically put in any sort of normal string prompt and we will get JSON back out of this. So in this case, we've basically just told it that, okay, we want you to make a, a sort of recipe where it's going to be a list of these recipes that, that you're going to return and that you're going to, each recipe is going to basically have a recipe name in here. So this is taken from their examples. And sure enough, we're asking for a list of five popular cookie recipes. And going through this, we can see that sure enough, we get a list back of dictionaries where each of them is a different kind of cookie recipe name in there. All right now, if we look at what we got back though, we got a string back. So we would need to convert that ourselves. So just, you need to keep that in memory. The next way to do it, and this is the one that only works with uh, Gemini 1.5 Pro, is that you can basically tell it that you're going to want JSON back, just like we did before. But we can also pass in a response schema that we're going to get back. So here you can see, I've added a little bit to it where not just recipe name I wanted this time, I want the ingredients. And I'm making a class to represent that. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't take just straight up pydantic classes in. So I will show you some tricks of how to get around that in a second. But if you just make your class like this, using these typing extensions to make it a typed dictionary, you can then basically pass that in. And you can see now we just basically say, right, list five popular cookie recipes. And it already knows the schema that it's going to use here. And so sure enough, it responds back with a list of them. For each one of them, we've got ingredients, we've got the recipe name in there. And now this is still a string, so we need to basically pass it with JSON loads and convert it to a dictionary if you want to access things in there. Let's jump in and have a look with the Pydantic classes. So if we just take the same thing that we had here and we make some Pydantic classes out of this, what we can do is we can take that response that we got back, load it up as JSON, and then just run it through and put it into our Pydantic classes that we've got there. So now we can basically access each one where we can just pick out from the list of recipes, the first one, print out the name, print out the ingredients, etc., cetera, and, and go through that. And you see here, we've got a loop just going through all of them. And then if we just want to access one in particular, we can go through and just access it like that. All right, so let's jump on to what we were doing in the previous video where we want to pass out stuff from an article. So I've copied over the Pydantic classes exactly like before and I haven't changed those at all. Now, what I'm going to do though is to get them into a format that I can put into this, I'm going to just basically say article response dot schema JSON. And you'll see that this is going to give me out now a string with all of this set up for me. So we can see that, okay, I've got the, you know, org type is going to be enums. We've got the list of the enums that we've got there. We've got the same thing for a person. We've got our description. We've got our properties. We've got all of that. Now this string 
we can pass into, there's our article getter just to get the article like we did in the last video. Now that string that we had up there, we can basically just pass this into our Gemini call. So we can pass it in the system instruction here, where I'm basically saying you're a helpful assistant that scans for people, products, and organizations mentioned in articles, same as what we had in the OpenAI one. And here are just using saying, using this JSON schema, article response equals, and then passes in the JSON schema, it's going to pass in that whole big string that we made up there. And it can then use that as the schema for this. So unfortunately, we can't just pass the Pydantic into this sort of response schema and have it, you know, work out. I've tried a, a few different ways. It will work, actually. You can pass things in. You can do a sort of conversion as long as your Pydantic isn't too nested. Once it becomes quite nested, you start to run into issues here. But this way works really nice. So we can just pass out this you know, article response, return an article response. And you can see, sure enough, if I run that through, I basically do my JSON you know, object loading and I've got it out like this. And then sure enough, now I get my you know, name for each of these, the organization, the product type, just like we had before. Now, if you want to convert that back to our article response as a Pydantic model, we can do that with basically running our own function to do that. So this is an example of just writing a function to take that JSON output and put it back into the Pydantic class that we've got here. Sure enough, when we put it back into the Pydantic class, we've got the enums being shown as a product type device. We've got all, all the things that we had from the OpenAI version. So we just need to basically do a little bit of conversion back and forth there. Now we can basically look at all the products. We can look at the summary that we got out. Everything is still there just like before. So that's basically how to do it with Gemini. One of the cool things that you can also do is do this with images. If you want to basically run an image through, so here I've just brought in an image and you can see that this is like a flight timetable at an airport. And I've got a couple of different ways I can do this. So let's look at this first way of where I'm going to just do it with the Gemini 1.5 Pro model. And you would think that often you probably want to use the Pro model because we're using an image. So let's just try it out with both models. So we can see if we do it with the Pro model, we can make our class here, where we're going to have flight time, flight destination. We can pass that in for the response schema is going to be a list of flight infos that we get. And the prompt is just going to be list out the times and destinations. And you can see, sure enough, we get this output. If we just load that JSON and print this out, we're actually getting out the output for each flight and each sort of destination and each time. And looking at them, they all seem to be correct, right? It's managed to get all of them out and OCR them really nicely there. So what if we want to do that with, with Flash? So Flash obviously is a lot quicker, a lot cheaper. So remember Flash, we can't use the response schema. So we now need to basically do it. And in this case, I'm doing it as a Pydantic class. I'm just going to take this, my Pydantic class, make a, a schema JSON for as a string. I'm going to set, pass in your helpful assistant that scans for flight times and destinations. Use this JSON schema, pass that in. I want to return a list of flight infos there. And then I can just pass in my prompt, list out the flight times and destinations. Now you'll notice that again here in the model generate, I'm passing in the prompt and the image. So I, I guess I didn't point that out up here. We've got our image there. So whenever we pass an image in, we can pass in a list of multiple things. So I've got a prompt and then image here. And you can see that I just printed out the, the schema. So we see what's going in. This is the schema that's going in. And sure enough, we get a, a response text back that if we part that as JSON and pass that through, again, we're getting the full list of flight times and flight destinations. And just having a quick look at it, it looks like they're all correct, both in the Flash model and the Pro model here. So this is a really cool way if you want to go through a lot of images and pull out certain data and return that in a JSON format. And we could have put this back into our Pydantic format, don't forget. And then we can use it. We could put that in a database. We could use it for doing different kinds of analysis and stuff like that. And remember, we didn't just have to do OCR with this. We could have got it to also put in an image description in there. We could have put a whole bunch of different things in there. This can be a great way 
of where you've got a lot of images that you want to use for a multimodal rag, for doing something like that, the flash model actually works really good for that stuff. And it turns out to be really cheap for that kind of thing as well. So overall, I just wanted to show you how to do the same thing in Gemini, and then also just show you how to do this with images so that you can actually start to do multimodal stuff. And you could imagine in the not too distant future, we're going to be able to do this with things like audio as well. So for your own apps, you can start thinking about, okay, what can you use these things to do? And what are the sort of creative apps that you can make with? Anyway, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.